good morning. Just enjoy the music for a moment while we wait for others to join us. This is the Peer Gint Suite by Edward Grieg. morning everybody. Um, I'll just lower that a touch. This is Stephanie from the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary and today is Thursday the 17th of June. I've got the month right this time. Uh, 2021 obviously. The music you're listening to is Peer Gint by Edward Grieg and this was written to accompany a play of the same name by Enric um, Gibson. Um, it was in four suites, and this is part of one of the suites, and it's called Morning, so I thought it was quite uh, suitable for our, our morning schedule. And I'm playing um, classical music uh, this morning for a good reason which will become apparent later. So before we go into our healing minute, if you'd like to make yourself comfortable and um, relax if it's safe to do so, I'll just lower this a little bit more. And we're going to focus today on the topic of water in different ways. So we're going to pay a little visit to a waterfall. So if you can imagine yourself walking through a forest until you come to a clearing. And in the clearing, you'll see in front of you a waterfall. So breathe in that sparkling freshness that beautiful fresh air in front of the waterfall. And as the mist settles on your skin, it relaxes every muscle, invigorating all your senses. And sit down gracefully on a large rock, directly facing the waterfall and gaze at the water's edge. You feel completely relaxed, yet totally invigorated with the energy of the earth, wind and water. If you wish, you may walk to the water's edge. And while you're there, breathe in deeply. And you may wish to walk into the water a little or a bit more than a little. And if you're happy, to stand under the waterfall to cleanse you, that's fine. If you're not, you can sit on your rock and visualize yourself standing under the water. Oh, a little glitch there. Um, so, if, if you, so if you wish, you can sit on your rock and imagine yourself standing under the waterfall, being cleansed by that wonderful, fresh water. And see how water, the, the energies of light, water, wind and earth come together as one to sustain life, creating conditions and causes 
for a verdant forest or a garden which contains all forms of life. You can see that all life is created by connections, nurtured by mutual dependence, constantly changing, yet constantly growing. And as you pause to enjoy a few more breaths by the water, or if you're in the water, you may wish to come out and wrap yourself in a nice white cloth or towel. And you can just sit there listening to the noise of the waterfall. And as that sound recedes into the distance, it, you are filled with the feeling of gratitude, a profound appreciation of your life, a thankfulness for your connection to all forms of life and the power you receive from light, wind, water and earth. And your mind is at peace and your body is relaxed and you breathe naturally in this moment as you return to where you came from. And as we prepare now to go into our, our healing minute, we thank you for joining us today. And um, we will open with our attunement and grounding. So we give thanks that we are gathered here today and ask that our homes be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, allow a column of pure white light to flow down through your body. Feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. Feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. And I'm now going to read um, one, of the, one of our prayers, the Harry Edwards prayers, um, the Great Invocation. So, from the light of God, within the mind of, from the light of light, from the point of light, within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God, love has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out and is cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. And I'll read the um, Harry Edwards um, the Sanctuary Prayer next. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers and spirit, that through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me might be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose. And for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you. Amen. And for the distant healing, we ask that as healing, and well, firstly, we ask for the Harry Edward Sanctuary healing, um, distant healing list to be included in this list. You may have uh, your own healing lists. We ask for healing worldwide for any stresses and strifes in the world and we'd like to include the whole animal kingdom and all sentient beings. And don't forget yourself as well. And with this distant healing, we ask that as the healing energy reaches them, 
they receive a tangible improvement in their condition and a release of their pain or discomfort and a non-burdening of any mortal or emotional weight. May it refresh them and leave them with new hope for the future. So I'll just give a little gong and I'll give you another one in one minute. Well, thank you for joining us for that healing minute today. As I've said before, the energy of a group is so effective. It's, uh, it's really wonderful that you join us for that. And so, some notices. Well, on Monday the 21st of June, just put this on silent for a moment. On uh, Monday the 21st of June, we have the Summer Solstice Day at the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. It starts at 10.30 a.m. It goes through to 9 p.m. You can buy a ticket for the whole day from Eventbrite, or you can just come for part of the day, which are separate pricings. So you can come during the day or just the evening. Um, details are on our Facebook site and the website. And as I said, it's booked through Eventbrite. We hope to be able to, um, to bring some of this day to you live or by posting recordings. Um, so we'll see how that works out on the day. Um, today week, next Thursday, uh, John Phillips will lead our guided meditation on Zoom and Facebook um, in the afternoon. So that's not today, it's next Thursday. Um, tomorrow is uh, Friday the 18th and Stuart will be taking the Healing Minute tomorrow, so a new face for you. And Alan will be taking it on Saturday. So um, there we are. Well, it's uh, I know weather is a very popular subject in England and I think there's a good reason for it. Having had a reef of uh, a, diff a heat wave, which wasn't always that pleasant, but at least the sun shone, we now have um, today and a forecast of lots of rain. <laughs> so the grass needs it, the ground needs it. I'm sure the animals appreciate it and it does cool the air a bit. It's just the sun is gone. So what can one do? So I'm going to um, discuss a topic of water today. And uh, there was um, a, a book written called Messages in Water, or I've got the exact title here. Maybe it was Messages from Water. I'll get the exact title in a moment. And um, it, it, in 2004, it became a New York Times bestseller. It was written by um, a Japanese scientist researcher called Dr. Masaru Emoto. And he had taken into account that we as, as humans are 70% water and the earth, the planet, is 70% water. And you may notice that in a lot of therapies, um, emotions are are, are sort of symboled, symbolized by water. So taking all that into account, 
it's quite clear that um, our emotional state plays a huge part in our life. And so he decided to test how, he did an extensive study of how our thoughts, our words, and our feelings affect the physical reality. Um, so he took up the quest to understand the effect of water in relation to human emotions in the early 1990s. He did experiments with frozen water crystals using high-speed photography, which led him to the astonishing revelation that water has the capacity to absorb human feelings and emotions and to be powerfully impacted by them. His photographs of water crystals showed water's receptivity to sounds, thoughts, words, and pictures. Positive words, loving words, such as love, or thank you, or angel, or beautiful music, such as Mozart or Beethoven, or what I've just been playing, they formed exquisite shapes, whereas words like you're a fool, or you make me nauseous, or discordant music, such as heavy metal, apologies to those excellent heavy metal musicians out there, um, they showed fragmented and malformed shapes. So the vibration of good words had a positive effect and the vibration of negative words had the power to destroy. So how did, how did they do this? Well, they would drop a sample of water on a hundred Petri dishes and freeze them for three hours at a very low temperature. They were taken out, placed onto a microscope, magnified 200 to 500 times and photographed in a refrigerated room. Furthermore, he discovered that the most beautiful water crystals were formed when exposed to the words love and gratitude. The words loved and gratitude were shown to have the greatest impact. And I'll show you something here. So this could be a Blue Peter moment where I could say that this is one I made earlier, except of course I didn't make them. But I'll just show you and I'll explain something about these uh, in, in a few minutes. Is that the right way around? <laughs> I'll explain something about these in, in a few minutes. Um, so the, the words love and gratitude were shown to have a great impact. So these words were written on pieces of paper and placed under the water samples or just spoken or sent in a focused thought form to the water. Well, a focused thought form, you could say, really is a form of, of giving healing, isn't it? And this indicates the impact that love and gratitude can have on the world. So bringing you back to these, to these, um, I first came across the, uh, Dr. Ramoto's studies uh, some years ago, and I bought um, these coasters for my personal use. And whenever students were on a healing course, they'd always use them to put their glasses of water on. And um, they were so popular, and I used to buy them as gifts for friends. And so they were so popular that one day I phoned the Healing Trust, who had a shop at the time. They no longer do, so before anybody inundates them with phone calls, I need to explain this. They had a shop at the time, and I phoned and used to phone and order some. And then one day I phoned and they announced that they were closing the shop. This was quite some years ago now. Uh, it's long closed and I asked if I could still get these and they couldn't get them anymore wherever they had got them from they was no longer available and so that was the end of that and if I'd known of course I would have stocked up with loads as one thinks one does in hindsight and um, so I've only got the, the few the handful I've got basically um, but I'm just showing it to you as an example of the kind of thing that one can can do with with love and gratitude and what I used to do with these, and still do, is I would literally place them onto my glass of drinking water. Or if I, if you use a water filter jug, which, which I do at times, I would place the water filter jug on that. So all that water was already filled with love and gratitude by the time it entered my glass. Um, it was also, even under a vase of flowers, if you've got some flowers and you want them to last a bit longer, even something as practical as that, I found they, they you know, if the theory works, they're going to work with any kind of water. So, um, you know, maybe you can make up something yourself at home or just, you know, a piece of paper and coat it with something protective and, and use that. So that's just an idea. Um, right, so in, in one experiment, getting back to Dr. Masaru Emoto, in one experiment, different words were labelled on distilled water and left overnight. On one bottle he wrote, you fool, and on the other he wrote, thank you. The next day they were frozen and pictures were taken. 
The same experiment was repeated by different staff, so it wasn't always the same person just to, to get around that possibility that maybe this only happened with him. He did have a team of staff. So uh, it, the same um, experiment was repeated with different staff, but each time it had the same result. And similarly, there was a clear difference in the reaction of water to the words soul and angel versus ghoul and villain. He actually didn't use the words ghoul and villain, but I felt they were a softer version of the words he did use. I didn't like the negative connotation of those, so I took some poetic license and changed them to something slightly softer sounding, but getting the same message across, if you like. Um, his first, so the first book, The Hidden Messages in Water, was him de talking about discovery and how crystals formed in frozen water revealed changes when specific concentrated thoughts were directed towards them. And that water from clear springs or mountain streams and water that had been exposed to loving words showed brilliant, complex and colorful snowflake patterns when frozen. In contrast, water from polluted sources or water exposed to negative thoughts formed incomplete, randomly formed ice structures with asymmetrical patterns. So he had he wrote several volumes, and then in 2004, as I said, he wrote his iconic book. Um, and after that, he spent a lot of years uh, touring and lecturing. Um, the Hidden Messages in Water in 2004. He also wrote The Healing Power of Water, Water of Crystal Healing, Messages from Water and the Universe, Water Knows the Answers. He's written quite a few. Um, his ex he also did some experiments just to um, change, change it slightly and show the same result. He also did some experiments uh, using rice. And what he did was he took three large beakers and he poured some rice into them and he covered the rice with water. And uh, every day he passed by the beakers and to the first one he said thank you, to the second one he said you're an idiot, and the third one he completely ignored. Interestingly, after a month, the first beaker, the thank you beaker, started to ferment and smelt fresh. The second turned black, the one that he insulted, and the rice in the third had started to rot, that was the one that he had ignored. So Dr. Amoto felt that this experiment provides an important lesson, especially in how we treat children, because indifference actually does them the greatest harm. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Um, I think it's that, I thought that was, uh, that was really that val valuable to know about um, children, how indifference does them less harm than, than the odd uh, crossword. So to sum up, Emoto said that the emotional energies and vibrations could change the physical structure of water. His, crystal, or his water crystal experiments consisted of exposing water in glasses to various words, pictures or music, then freezing it and examining the ice crystals, the properties with microscopic photography. He claimed that water exposed to positive speech and thoughts created visually pleasing ice crystals and that negative intentions yielded ugly ice formations. The most beautiful crystals were formed by being exposed to the words love and gratitude. So um, yeah, you may, have to, you may be familiar with all that already and um, if you weren't, um, it's, as I said, it's interesting to know something we don't think about, we're surrounded by water, but I'm sure if you sit by the sea and you feel all those negative ions and the fresh spray of a waterfall, for example, or a fountain, you're going to feel naturally invigorated. And obviously, if you were in an area with heavily polluted water, if for some reason you had to be there, I'm sure you would notice the dense energies in comparison. So um, the, I'm going to play another um, a piece of music um, according to what I've just read to you. And as he mentioned uh, Beethoven a few times, I had the piano sonata in C sharp minor by Ludwig, Ludwig van Beethoven. So um, we could put that on now.
and thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the music and um, possibly you may look at water a little differently now. What I find is, even though I read that many years ago, you know, you forget there's so many other things that come on in life and every now and again it's just nice to be reminded. Well, that's me anyway. <laughs> so, so here we are, Pia Piano Sonata number 14 in C-sharp major, otherwise known as the Moonlight Sonata. Notice somebody likes the music. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> I'll read the rest later. It's hard to read them while I'm speaking. It's only now I can look at it or when I sign back in later. You're welcome, Susie. Oh yes, I heard of those. I believe they're very good. I, I don't know much about them, but I've heard of them. You're welcome, Ritva. So thank you very much for joining us today. And um, I'll see you next Thursday. And uh, you'll probably keep, uh, you'll probably continue to have the Moonlight Sonata humming in your head once I switch this off. So bye bye for now and take care. <laughs>